Well hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. This week we're going to be jumping right into Pokemon Moon. That's right, one of my least favorite games. But we're just going to be playing the game with only fairy types and as well as a hardcore Nuzlocke. Pokemon Moon doesn't really have that many fairy types available, only about like 10 or 11 or so. So if I would have picked Sun, I would have actually had access to a lot more Pokemon like Enlola Ninetales and also the Whimsicott line. But we should still have more than enough Pokemon to be able to win this one. For the people that don't know what a hardcore Nuzlocke is, it's pretty easy. We cannot use any items in battle, we will have level caps. We also have to play on set mode and that's basically it. The question of today's video is going to be, what is you guys' favorite professor? Even though I don't like Pokemon Sun and Moon, Professor Kukui is actually my favorite of all the professors. He just has this chill vibe and I mean, who doesn't love this guy? Let's try to smash 5,432 likes. And if you aren't subscribed yet, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well. And with that out of the way, let's see if we can beat a Pokemon Moon Hardcore Nuzlocke with only fairy types. The game starts off with a video call with the best professor of them all. And seeing him close up like this, I mean, he's pretty thick. We give ourselves the names Wiggo and get to watch the beginning cutscene where Lily is running away from people in white clothes. So it must be some kind of cult. We then wake up in our house, put on all of our clothes because our mother tells us to and get thrown into the world of Pokemon. And our first actual encounter with Pokemon is Cosmog being assaulted by some angry birds. I'm pretty sure they're in the wrong game, so let's go back to Pokemon. We try to save little Cosmog and as the bridge collapses, we then get saved by Superman. And once we're done with that, we go back to Tapu Village to get ourselves our starter Pokemon. Guess which one of these three is going to evolve into the fairy type. If you guessed Litten, you were wrong. We're going to be picking Poplio and we're going to be allowing myself to actually use Poplio and Brion even though they're not fairy type yet because eventually they will evolve into Primarina. Primarina is actually one of my least favorite starters so I just named it a sad smiley. We then get to beat up How, our rival that's just a little bit too friendly. Water puts out fire though, so we easily manage to overpower him. Professor Kukui also decides to learn to us how to capture Pokemon, but since there aren't any fairy types available to us yet, we're straight going to skip into the second How battle, where we also destroy Pichu and Litten once again with Poplio's water guns. We then get invited to a dinner party at the professor's house, and I have to say this is the coolest house I've ever seen. And he also installed some weird app on my phone so now he can talk to me. I guess this is this world's Siri. We then have our first difficult battle against a teacher in a school with a Magnemite. As it did about half of my health with a Thundershock. Luckily we took it out with two more water guns and the rest of the battle was easy. We rose to the top of the food chain at school but now it's time to pursue a dream of ours becoming a photographer. Have you ever seen someone take these kinds of quality pictures from Pokemon before? That's what I thought. This is basically Pokemon Snap 2.0. We then have to fight our first trial captain Lima with normal type Pokemon but I couldn't keep Poplio under the required level cap which is 10, so I'll just be taking the next one which is the totem Pokemon Alolan Raticate at level 12. It doesn't really matter though because we water gun Donald Trump Jr. as well as Bob Ross because Poplio is pretty overpowered early game. Immediately after we get our first fairy type encounter cutie fly which I name Emma. This is actually amazing for the first trial as well because it's bug and fairy type so it's easily going to be able to get rid of that totem Raticate. I first decide to take out a Rattata so that I can learn Silverwind. Once that's done I just take out the Raticate with Silverwind as well and proceed to take the Z Crystal with me so that we can meet up with Professor Kukui right after who is going to learn us a little bit about Z moves. Did you know that the Z in Z moves stands for Zwiggo? It's kind of like a secret Game Freak easter egg. Nothing really significant happens anymore until the battle with Hala, so let's just go to that immediately. He has fighting types, we have fairy types, don't even have to talk about this. We took out Mankey, Makuhita and Crab Brawler all with fairy winds from Cutie Fly. No trouble at all, our first grand trial is out of the way already. 
So we get our boating license and head on over to Akala Island where we also see Mello and Olivia, two more trial captains. We also make a quick pit stop at the clothing shop to get some more drip. And then it's time to search for the next fairy type Pokemon, Jigglypuff. I had to get this by letting an Igglybuff call it in via the SOS feature. This didn't take too long and after capturing it, we named it Beyonce. You know, because Jigglypuff actually loves singing. And I bet that Beyonce also loves to draw on other people's faces. We also grab an Eevee, which we have to evolve into Sylveon by getting it up to two hearts via the care feature. A quick side note, I won't be using the care feature at all for the rest of this run because I feel like friendship kind of ruins the game. As I think it's kind of cheap that your Pokemon can just live on one HP because they like you a lot. Once Eevee loves us enough though, we get ourselves a Sylveon named Manu. And our Poplio also finally evolved into Brion, in my opinion the worst middle stage evolution out of all of them. Like, there's just no debate. I'm sorry if you like this Pokemon, I just really don't. But you know what I do like? Pokemon battling, so let's take on Hao again. A pretty easy battle, Sylveon takes care of his Pikachu and Historicat goes down by my Brion's water guns. We then find a pretty cool character actually, Gladion, I really like him as well. I swear I'm not simping here. And he's going to serve as our second rival. Does that make him hard to take down though? Well, let's see. We took down his Zubat with Sylveon Swifts. And Type Null, even though it only knows Tackle at this point, was actually a very hard opponent to take down. Fairy winning it twice with Sylveon, brick breaking it with Jigglypuff, and then ultimately bringing in Brion, water gunning it twice and then finishing it off with an Aqua Jet because it's pretty damn tanky and it's pretty strong at this point in the game. He must be glad Eon to have it on his team. With that bad pun out of the way, we capture our next fairy type Pokemon, more lol, and name it less lol. We then get to do some swimming on Lapras's back and ultimately almost get eaten by a school of wishy-washies. I wonder if a wishy washy schooling form would eat you, would they actually wash your clothes? Those are the real questions. Anyway, with our new Morlol on the team, this battle was no problem at all. Wishy Washy could literally not touch me because I'm part grass type and I kept getting my HP back with Mega Drain so this battle was over in like 30 seconds. With our next trial complete, it's time to meet up with this region's John Cena, also known as the Masked Royale. Once we're done beating him up in the ring with a ladder and a chair, we go dancing on top of the volcano with some Marowax, a hiker, and then a big lizard. Since I found the TM for Skull for Brion, this was one of the easiest trials ever, just scalding the Salazzle, taking it out with Aqua Jet, and then finishing off the Salandit with a Scald as well. And that way we already have our, I wanna say gym badge, but it's just a trial complete again. Time to make our way over to the Lost Jungle, but first we meet up with Colrus, which means Generation 5 remakes confirmed, and we then also evolve our Morlul into a Shinotic. The grass type trial here is actually the hardest one yet, and no, it's not because we have to crush and make goo in front of Mallow's face, it's because of this Lurantis here. It has a super high attack stat already, combined with a lot of speed because it's a totem Pokemon. We're not going to be in for a good time, as it calls in a Trumbeak as well, which is not good for Emma here. I managed to hit two silver wins on the Lurantis, but then the Trumbeak ultimately took me down with a pluck, and that's our first death of the Nuzlocke. Goodbye Emma, you didn't even have the time to evolve. But its efforts weren't in vain because now I bring in Sylveon, set up a workup, take a Solar Blade because I have a Citrus Berry which is going to heal me up as well. And with this workup I can then go for Draining Kiss on the Lurantis to get all of my HP back and then take it out with a quick attack all while I was confused. Not hitting myself in my confusion twice in a row was a lot of luck that I definitely needed. To take out the Trumbeak, I brought in Brion because I didn't want to hit myself in my confusion and took it out with Scald and Aqua Jet, which means that we have completed Mallow's Trial as well. This gives us access to Comfy, a pure fairy type Pokemon, which I name Raymundo after the dad from Rocket Power. Please tell me someone remembers in the comments down below, because I don't want to be the only one that remembers Big Raymundo here. Or his nephew, Tito. Some more story related stuff happened that I really don't care about, so let's head on over to Olivia straight away. Since she has rock types and we have a grass and a water type on the team, this should again be an easy trial. It's Brion versus Nosepass, and I go for a Scald, but it doesn't even take it out and I get Thunder Waved. 
I then try to take it out with Aqua Jet, but that doesn't do enough damage, and we get hit with a Spark the turn after, as she then uses the full restore. I then use one more Scald and that finally takes out the Nose Pass, but we're not looking too good on Brion here. As Boldor comes in, I bring in Shinotic, put it to sleep with Sleep Powder, take it out with two Mega Drains, and go into Lycanroc with full health. A Continental Crush manages to almost one-shot me, but we are going to get some HP back from Mega Drain, but I still decide to go into Comfy anyway and take down this thing with two more Petal Blizzards. And up until the end of the game, I thought that Petal Blizzard was actually a special move. That's why I did barely any damage with Comfy. Once that trial is over, we meet up with the famous Faba. I don't know what he's famous for, but he is a pretty annoying character who is going to bring us to the Aether Foundation that seems a little bit too good to be true. And there's the catch, we have to fight big squids from out of space. Luckily, squids are apparently rock types, so my skull from Brion is going to take it out quite easily. Once we saved everyone in the institution, we go back by boat and see how eating a Malasada. I kind of want to know myself what they taste like, because they make it sound so delicious in this game. Anyway, with drooling over food aside, let's go and take on Hao on the next island. It's Brion vs Raichu, because I forgot to swap out my Brion with another Pokemon after the Nihilego fight. That means I'm going to have to swap into Sylveon, hit the Raichu with a couple of Drain Kisses, but ultimately I'm going to have to swap out into Shinotic, who is only going to be able to take two Psychics. But I decided, because I had the Quick Claw anyway, I was going to try and hit this thing. And it was going to be the Quick Claw activation, or my big mushroom friend was going to die. Luckily, the Quick Claw activated and the Raichu went down. Torgat goes into Inferno Overdrive, so I swap in Brion and then take it out with Scald again. And his last Pokemon is going to be Leafeon, so I bring in Shinotic to confuse it, then bring in Sylveon. And with two draining kisses and a quick attack later, we finally took out Leafeon and probably the hardest battle up until this point yet. We also go to the nearby park to meet up with Professor Kukui again and then meet up with Hapu and Lily as well. Once those encounters are over, we see Team Skull being aggressive against a bus stop. Yeah, they might be the most pathetic evil team ever, but they are still very, very enjoyable to watch. We then take the Executor bus up the mountain where we have to do a battle with a Steel-type guy, Molane, which should be really hard for our Fairy-types, right? Well, let's see. Since his highest level is level 30 and the Toto Pokemon is level 29, I decided to bring my Brion up to level 30, which does mean I'm not going to be able to use it against Vikavolt, but that would be stupid to do anyway. And who knew that Brion's Skull was all that we needed to take down Skarmory, Metang, and also Duck Trio. No one else had to even try to attempt this battle, so I guess it wasn't as hard as it seemed. Let's move on over to Sophocles, getting electrocuted in the dark while a Vikavolt is trying to ruin my life. I decide to lead with Sylveon and use Baby Doll Eyes on the Vikavolt twice to lower its attack. But it also brings in a Charger Bug, which is not something that we really can ignore, because Charger Bug is a pretty good Pokemon. I totally forgot to mention that we got a Carbink, so I decide to bring that in once my Sylveon is in red health. And he gets paralyzed by a Spark, gets stuck in paralysis like two or three times, but I still manage to set up two Sharpens and then hit the Vical Vault with a Continental Crush. But because Carbink's attack stat is basically non-existent, it still only does do about half of the Vikavolt's health. I then swap out into Shinotic, and I get so lucky to get the Effect Spore Poison off on the Vikavolt. Which means that it's now just a ticking time bomb, eventually the poison will just take it out if I manage to stall it out for long enough. So after stalling it out for a couple of turns with Moonlight, and also getting paralyzed a couple more times, the poison finally racks up and the Vika Vault goes down, so we now only have Charger Bug left. And a couple of Jigglypuffs Psychics later, and we finally win our Electric Type Island Challenge. Once that is done, the Professor gets into a gang fight with Guzma, a failed loser that couldn't even become a trial leader. Just kidding, I actually like Guzma. Because he has one of the coolest bug Pokemon out there, Galissapod. We shouldn't be too afraid of it though, because we resist bug. And its Razor Shell almost took out my Sylveon. Yeah, we're not going to mess with this thing. Time to almost die with Shinotic as well, but then put it to sleep with Sleep Powder. It's also at plus 4 in attack right now because it managed to set up two Swords Dances, but all we have to do is just get it under half health with Mega Drain, and then its Emergency Exit activates, and he brings in Ariados. 
We then bring in Carbink to deal with Ariados with Continental Crush and also Smackdowns, but I also set up a Reflect and Stealth Rock for the incoming Galissapod. Once everything is ready and set up, Galissapod finally comes in, I swap into Comfy and Petal Blizzard it out of the way. Since we won the Gang Wars, we get ourselves a Moonstone to evolve our Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, but the Gang Wars don't stop yet as Lily gets attacked by a team Skullgrunt. We turn it into a breakdance battle, we win, and they finally leave us alone for a bit. With this alone time, I decide to enter the most spooky supermarket that you've ever seen, and we play some more Pokemon Snap there, as we find ourselves Totem Mimikyu. I decide to lead off with Brion because I want to burn it with Scald as it's a physical attacker, as it turns out, this thing has a Lumberry, so I hit another Scald and get super lucky getting the second burn as well. Since we got hit with a Play Rough and a Nightshade this turn, we're going to have to swap out. I decide to bring in Carbing because I know it can take a couple of hits while the Mimikyu gets crippled down by the burn. Sadly enough, I'm not really able to hit any moves as the Hounder puts me to sleep with Hypnosis again. I bring in Beyonce to Wigglytuff, Psychic, the Hunter, and the Mimikyu until they are both dead, and that is another trial completed. And you know what that means, time for more Gang Wars. This time with Plumeria, but she was no problem, since we have Carbink on the team, we kill Golbat with Ancient Powers, and then Salazzle with a Continental Crush, because I got myself some boosts because of the Ancient Power. We then finally get our starter up to level 35, where it evolves into Primarina, and after actually gains the fairy typing. We then answer some questions in the worst house ever, I don't understand why you'd want to live here, even if you're a thug, but since my second name is basically Quizmaster, we easily pass it, and head straight to Mr. Boss Guzma's room. But since our team just got a big buff with Primarina, we easily take out Galissapod and Ariados with just a couple of Scalds. This doesn't really count as a trial though, but we still get the Buginium Z, and also see the Dark Type guy that I always forget the name of. Why does it always rain in this town is also a very interesting question. I don't understand why anybody would want to live here, but hey, Team Skull decides they love the rain. Now if only they would just build a competitive rain team around it so that I would struggle against them, but no, they decide to kidnap Lily instead. And then Gladion attacks us out of nowhere. Golban vs Primarina didn't go as planned as I took way too much damage from Poison Fangs, but in the end we still managed to win with Scalds. Type Null then comes out, so I decide to bring in Carbink. I hit it with a bunch of Ancient Powers, also getting boosts, and ultimately try to take it out with a Continental Crush, but it's left with like, a sliver of health. And I'm out of attacking moves, so I have to swap out. Wigglytuff here was able to take it out with a Psychic, but then he brings in Sneasel. This thing has Metal Claw, which hits me pretty hard once I switch into Sylveon, but my Draining Kisses heal enough health for me to take it out in the end. Once Gladion is defeated, we head on back to the boat, but before we can leave to the Aether Foundation, we have to fight Dark-type user Nani. Oh wait, I mean Nanu. And as you may have heard, it's dark types. We have fairy types. This is no problem at all, as Primarina takes out Sableye and Crocorot with Scalds. But since the Crocorot confused me with Swagger, I decide to swap out into Sylveon so I don't hit myself in my confusion, and then take out his last Pokemon, Alolan Persian, with Draining Kisses. Third grand trial done. Only one more to go before we can go and challenge the Pokemon League that isn't even in this country yet. Me and the boys travel to the Aether Foundation where we meet up with Faba again. Once we show him who's boss, he finally lets us into the elevator which brings us down to the labs. And Hao starts to have a dance battle against his trash can. While I have to clean up the bad guys. That's basically how useful Hao is in this game. It just sums it up right there in this frame. Anyway, once we're done there, it's time to fight Guzma for a third time. And don't worry, this should be the last time we fight him. He once again leads off with Galissapod, so my Primarina takes care of it with a Scald and a Moonblast. He then brings in Masquerade, which is one of the most annoying Pokemon on his team because it has Air Slash, which basically flinches 100% of the time because I have to swap out my Primarina, otherwise it's dead. I go into Sylveon, I just need to hit one move and this Masquerade is down, but I get flinched two times in a row again, causing me to swap out once more. This time I go into Raymundo to try and hit a Petal Blizzard, which does nothing, so I have to swap out again. I bring in Beyonce, finally hit a Psychic, and it's left with 1 HP, so I have to swap out again, otherwise Wigglytuff is dead. With my entire team basically hanging
hanging on a threat right now, I decided to bring in Carbink and finally finish this mass crane with ancient power. Which is probably what I should have done from the start. Luckily for us, we still had this Carbink because it also took out its pincer with a continental crush and an ancient power, and his final Pokemon, Ariados. I decided to go into Shinotic to put it to sleep with my effect spore, then also confuse it, then bring in Primarina, sculpt the Ariados, and defeat Guzma. I definitely made this battle way harder than it should have been. We finally go into Lusamine's office, and it turns out that she actually collects iced Pokemon. Kind of a weird hobby, so let's try to stop her. She brings out Cosmog and also a bunch of Ultra Beasts everywhere. Which is not good because they're going to be wreaking havoc amongst the entire region. Luckily we have all of the island guardians who are going to protect us from these things, so we should be good. She's clearly in love with this squid thing, so let's stop her before weird things start to happen. It's Primarina versus Clefable, I first hit it with a Scald, it sets up a cosmic power, so I set up a workup myself, I get hit with a metronome bullet seed and then a sunsteel strike but eventually still managed to take it out. Shinotic takes out her Lilligant with Sludge Bombs, but then she brings out Miss Magius. I decide to bring in Brionce, hit a couple of Psychics, but eventually the Miss Magius is going to be able to take me out, so I have to swap out before that happens. By going into Carbink, going for the Continental Crush again, and finally taking it out. For my Lodic, I decide to go into my Raymundo here and just stall it out of Hydro Pumps with Synthesis. Once it's out of Hydro Pumps, I go into Sylveon and then Draining Kiss it until it goes down, going into her final Pokemon Beware. I give it a couple more smooches and Lusamine finally falls, but she isn't done yet, she disappears into a portal and Lil Guzma here jumps after her. We also now know that we have to go get the Sun and Moon Flute so that we can play some flute and summon a legendary Pokemon of course. But we also make our way to the final island, unlocking another encounter for us, Grand Bull. Not the best, but also not the worst. Sadly enough, mine didn't have the Intimidate ability which I wanted. So I guess it is kind of not very good. But here on Pony Island, there is actually no Grand Trial Leader, so that job goes to Hapu after talking to Tapu Fini. We also make our way over to Exeggutor Island to get the Moon Flute. And as we're trying to make our way to Pony Canyon, we get stopped by Team Skull again. Luckily this time we don't have to beat up Plumeria, so it was pretty easy and we also get the Poisonium Z from her. Because she just wants her beloved Guzma back. In Pony Canyon we also meet up with Hapu again because we're finally going to be able to take her on in our Grand Trial Battle. But she has ground types and we have a Primarina, which means I use Scald on Duck Trio, Scald on Mudsdale as well. We take out Flying On with Moonblast, but then she goes into Gastrodon, so I swap into Shinotic, Giga Drain it once, and that's the Hapu fight over already. We then meet up with our leader, Mina, the fairy type one. We don't have to do anything with her, she just gives us the crystal. Kinda lazy, I know, but it's just going to make things go a lot faster. Let's go take the Dragon Z Crystal, but before we can do that, we have to beat out this Gomo O, which we just one shot. With Moonblast from Primarina again. I guess that's what happens when you're four times weak to it though. At the end of the canyon we see a Sun and Moon Altar and while me and Lily play the flute together, Cosmog evolves into Lunala. And once that happens we get teleported to the Squid World. Yeah, I don't really want to be here either, but before we take on the crazy Lusamine, we have to get a couple more Pokemon that are going to make our lives a lot easier. Starting off with a Klefki named Housekeys, and then also a Mimikyu named Runsaver, because Mimikyu is just one of the best Pokemon to have in Nuzlogs because of its disguise ability. Once those two are done and dusted, I go back to Route 1 to capture some Munchlaxes for leftovers, and once that is done, we go back to Squidward's house and challenge Lusamine, who has now turned into a big UFO alien squid. Oh yeah, and all our Pokemon have buffed stats now too. Great. Why is this Clefable looking so smug at me as well? Like, just stop it. I decide to lead with Klefki and because of my Prankster ability, my Torment is going to go first, which means it can't use Moonlight or Moonblast two times in a row. I then also set up three layers of spikes with Klefki so that all of their Pokemon 
will take a bunch of damage once they decide to enter the field. Once that's done, I decide to mirror shot the Clefable a couple of times as well, lowering its accuracy, but ultimately Klefki is a little bit too low on health. So I swap a Mimikyu to set up a bunch of Hone Claws on the Clefable, and then proceed to take it out with a critical hit Play Rough. Miss Magus decides to give us some extra health with Pain Split, so we take it out with Shadow Claw the turn after. We get paralyzed by Lilligan, but also take it out with Play Rough. And on Milotic, we finally get paralyzed and hit with a Hydro Pump, which means that we're going to have to get Mimikyu out of here. I go into Shinotic instead, start Giga Draining away until the Big Schneck is down, and then we go into Beware as our final Pokemon. Just a single Moonblast is enough to win me the battle, which means that Squid Man Girl is no longer, and we get to proceed to Victory Road where Gladion is already waiting for us. This team is actually pretty solid to take out my fairy types, a Crobat and a Lucario, and also a Sylvali, so I'm going to have to watch out. First off, Crobat versus Klefki. I first set up a Torment again and get hit with an Acrobatics. The turn after, he decides to switch out into Weavile and I set up a layer of Spikes. Three Draining Kisses later and the Weavile falls to my Klefki. He brings in Lucario and it goes for Aura Sphere, so I decide to hit two Draining Kisses, but then I have to swap out into Mimikyu, which is going to not get hit with the Aura Sphere and be able to counter back and kill that Lucario in one turn. He brings in Sylvali, I first go for the Play Rough, then hit it with a couple of Charms to cripple its attack. I set up a single Hone Clause and then take out Sylvali with another Play Rough. Only Crobat left, I didn't really think this was going to take me out, so I went for a Shadow Claw, but I got outsped and hit with a critical Cross Poison. This left me with 6 HP and the Crobat didn't go down after that, so I have to swap out here or Mimikyu is dead. Luckily, we still have our lovely Carbink, who is going to Stone Edge the Crobat, win against Gladion, so we can move on over to the How battle at the end of this victory road. And How still has his trusty Raichu as his first Pokemon, so Shinotic's Quick Claw is going to activate Spore it to put it to sleep, and then take it out with two Moon Blasts. For Incineroar, I decide to go into Primarina and go for the Scald, which is going to bring it down into red health, but I also got hit with an Inferno Overdrive and then with an Earthquake, which left me with only 8 HP, but an Aqua Jet in the end took down Incineroar. For Kamala, I went into Sylveon, but I got hit with a critical wood hammer, and Sylveon already has to get out of there. So I go into Shinotic, who is able to hit a bunch of Giga Drains, but ultimately he's only left with 2 HP until we finally manage to take out the Kamala. The last Pokemon is going to be Leafeon, so I bring in Mimikyu, charm it 3 times to cripple its attack totally, and then proceed to bully it with Klefki's Draining Kisses and Mirror Shots. We all know that the Pokemon League has finally been built, so let's move on over to the Elite Form and Champion, starting off with the easiest one, Hala, who's totally going to get swept by Sylveon. Hariyama couldn't stand up to a couple of Moonblasts, as well as Crabominable, and then Poliwrath, Primeape and Beware all went down to the same Moon Blasts. With Hala defeated, I immediately go to the second easiest one, the Rock type. Elite 4 member, Olivia. Shinoda is actually able to take down Relicant with Giga Drain, but then we go into Lycanroc. I go for a Giga Drain, but get put to sleep because of the Relicant's yawn, and then decide to go into Klefki to take a... Continental Crush to the face. Once that was done, I just went for a Draining Kiss to get some HP back, and then took it out with two more Mirror Shots. We then have an epic battle between Probopass and my Primarina, because I just can't kill it even with two Scalds, and with her full restores and me being paralyzed, I eventually have to swap out because of the power gems that do way too much damage on me. Luckily in the end, Mimikyu was able to take it out with Shadow Claws, as she goes into Carbink, which should normally be on my side. Once we're done play roughing it and taking it out, she finally goes into her last Pokemon, Golem. I go into Sylveon to take anything that this thing throws at me because Sylveon is just such a defensive beast. I mean, special defensive beast. And we then Moonblast that Golem into Oblivion so that we win our second Elite Four member battle. This now allows us to go to Acerola, the third and Ghost type one, so we're going to be starting out with our Mimikyu. Play roughing the Sableye and taking it out in a single hit. Delmise comes out next, which I can also take down with two Shadow Claws this time, but we also get hit with Shadow Ball, doing just about half of our health. We also take out Frostlass with a single Shadow Claw the turn after. And for Palisand, I decide to go into Shinotic, which was a good move because it went for Never Ending Nightmare, which I survived. And the next turn, I just hit it back with Giga Drains to take it out. 
Since the last Pokemon on our team was going to be a Drifblim, I went into my Rock type Carbank, Stone Edged, and Continental crushed it, and won my third Elite Four member battle. Let's go to the final one, the Flying type one, with the lady that seemed to come out of nowhere, Kahili. Kahili here has a Skarmory as her first Pokemon. We don't really have anything super effective for it, so I just lead off with Primarina, go for Aqua Jet to break the Sturdy, and then take it out with Scald. Probably should have done it the other way around, but then she would have healed with a full restore anyway. Mandibus is our next Pokemon, which we take out with two Ice Beams. Probably should have gone for Moonblast, but doesn't really matter. Crobat then comes out, hits me with a Poison Fang and poisons me as well, but I managed to hit one more Ice Beam and then take it out with Aqua Jet. Is what I was going to try and do if we didn't use a full restore. So Primarina has to get out of there because uh, poison damage racks up pretty quickly. I then bring in Krilevki, I decide to go for a couple of mirror shots here because the Crobat can basically not touch me and she clearly knows this herself as she swaps in her fire type Oricorio. So I go into Mimikyu, go for a two Shadow Claws to take it out but in the meantime she just kept going for teeter dance for some reason which of course wasn't gonna work since I was already confused so I don't really get it why the AA spazzed out like that but I'm pretty happy about it. For two cannon I went into carbink taking the supersonic sky strike like a champ countering back with a Z move of my own and taking it down in one hit. We all know that the final Pokemon is Crobat so I just stone edge it once and that's the final lead four member defeated let's go to the champion Kukui. The battle that we've all been waiting for. We go Lycanroc versus Kalefki turn 1. I set up my 3 layers of spikes and try to take out the Lycanroc with a couple of mirror shots but in the end I overshoot my shot here and get killed by a stone edge. So I go into Primarina to easily finish it off, but then he brings in Magnezone, which is something I absolutely have nothing for. So I decide to stay in with Primarina here, which should have been able to take it out, but in the end I got paralyzed while I could take it out with Aqua Jet, and then it got countered back with a Thunderbolt, taking out my starter as well. So I've tripled our death total in a matter of like 5 seconds here. Luckily the Magnezone also goes down the same turn by the burn damage, and then he brings in a Lolan Ninetales against my Sylveon. A Moonblast later and it's down already. He brings in Braviary, I decide to Moonblast it twice, but it doesn't quite take it out, and he uses a full restore, so I'm going into Carbink again to take it out with Stone Edge and Continental Crush, but that doesn't work out either because I get Whirlwinded. Into Mimikyu, which is actually perfect because now I can take it out with Playrough, and he sends out Decidueye to turn after, which we can also one-shot with Shadow Claw. The next Pokemon we have to take out, and also the final one, is going to be Snorlax, so my Mimikyu is going to charm it three times to totally cripple its attack, and then taking it out with a couple more playrus from Mimikyu to crown ourselves champions of the Alolan region with only fairy type Pokemon. And I just gotta say that this run actually sparked some more love for Pokemon Sun and Moon with me. I think I just don't like Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because there is too much going on there. Regular Sun and Moon are actually not that bad. And if we're going to look at the MVP of this entire run, I would say it was probably Primarina. This uh, run actually took me a couple amount of attempts. I died at Vikavolt and at Lurantis in the runs before this one. But the rest of the game was pretty smooth sailing. But this was definitely a fun little challenge. But that was that for today. As always, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do this yourself, you can click the links in the description. Again, it's always appreciated but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.